I'm not sure about that one. That would be a brilliant move for him, really. It just seems like he's made for that kind of Liverpool front line. Hello then and welcome to the Football Diary podcast. And even though there's no games on, we're still finding something to talk about. And it's everyone's favourite thing to talk about by the judges social media, the transfer market. But today we're going to look at what each club in the Premier League we think needs to set up better for next season. So some impressive moves have taken place already. Man City obviously bringing in Erling Haaland, Liverpool bringing in Darwin Nunes, United bringing in... Who was it, Dave? Oh, wait, no. Sorry. Maybe one day, eh? They talked about Frankie de Jong enough, <clears throat> but we're going to talk about what we think now, Dave. And obviously, there's still rumours going around, and I'm sure some of them will say, yep, that sounds like a good idea. But also, let's try and see who we think might fit a squad properly, starting with one of the younger squads in the league, a squad that's going to look to push on after a pretty good season last year in Arsenal. And they've already done a little bit of business, bringing in Vieira in midfield. Uh, it looks like Saliba could be in, could be out. What else do you think Arsenal need to do to sort this squad out and really challenge for fourth this season, Dave? Um, I think they need to find something uh, down the wings. They've obviously had Pepe in there for the last couple of years and his addition's kind of not really done anything. Obviously we've heard about Mertens being linked to, obviously, the Premier League in the past. I'd, really like, I'd like to see him. I know his kind of age isn't really on his side anymore, but it'd be nice to see him come in and and he can offer goals as well. I think with Lacazette going out, they're in need of someone to kind of have some experience in that forward line that is very young. They've obviously signed Eddie Nketiah to a new long-term contract as well this week. But to be honest, I thought it was down the middle that they would need something more so. And there's been a lot of names mentioned with Arsenal's striker hunt. There's a few that are less inspiring than others. Alvaro Morata's being linked as of late. They obviously missed out on a couple of targets over the last six months with the likes of Vlahovic going to Juventus. There's big talk of Gabriel Jesus. I'm not sure about that one. We've talked about that before. I'm not sure that he's enough of a, a proven goal scorer for Arsenal when it's a, a very different setup to Man City. Although Arteta will know him well and will try and emulate some of Pep's style without a De Bruyne is Jesus a 38 game a season kind of striker that's going to bring you 30 goals? I'm not I'm not convinced he is. One player that's been mentioned a few times and it's gone a bit quiet lately, but I think would suit what Arsenal need massively is uh, Alexander Isak from Real Sociedad. They definitely need a central striker, someone who can finish off chances in the box and someone with a bit of a presence to him as well as a dynamic bit of pace. I think he is a fantastic option for them. That's the thing with Arsenal at the minute. I think that they do need somebody, I think, with probably a bit more experience that's going to yeah. really solidify um, their defence. But and Although, obviously, they were much improved last year defensively on the on the large part of games. Um, they're still, we've seen they're still vulnerable. Yeah. Um, I do feel as though they just need something that's going to give them a bit of balance there. Now, let's move on to my beloved Villa. And to be honest... I'm already really happy with the window we've had so far. Coutinho obviously signing permanently. Diego Carlos looks like a very strong and uh, commanding centre-back, although maybe a couple of errors in him. I'm quite happy with him as a sign-in. And Bubakar Kamara, who made his France debut in the last round of fixtures as well. So some good business done by Villa already. Definite need for some more strength. Some big names being linked. The, the profile of player that Villa are being linked with, Dave, Changed a lot over the last six months since Gerrard's come in, hasn't it? Certainly has, and you know, a, a name, you know, the name of Steven Gerrard's going to kind of entice anyone out there. I think, really, especially some of the younger players. I think he's shown in his time at Villa and um, at Rangers, he was willing to give young players an opportunity, and he's certainly done that at, at Villa as well. Um, it'll be interesting to see what more they can do. Obviously, like you mentioned, they've got a lot of their business done early. So. I was happy to see that. And we're still being linked with a lot of names. Gareth Bale started being thrown around as well. Obviously, looking for a home for him still. Luis Suarez has been touted for a little while. I think you know my feelings on that. I'm hoping we still stay well away there. I'd rather see Cameron Archer in the side. A name that I have seen mentioned that I would be over the moon with. And to be honest, with the signing of Carlos, Kamara and Coutinho, I don't think you can write it off in terms of a big name arrival, is uh, Awa from Leon. Now, Villa definitely need to strengthen their midfield in some way or another. And Kamara will do that to an extent. 
but there is still talk that Douglas Louise might leave this summer and go over to Roma. John McGinn is apparently being looked at by Spurs and Man United, although I'm quite sure he'll stay this summer. It would be nice to see Villa with a bit more of a dynamic midfielder. And Morgan Sansom kind of was brought in to be that player and it looks almost certain that he'll move on this summer now. I've seen a lot of Awa and I've always liked what I've seen. I think Villa could be an exciting move for him. But I think with players moving out, Matt Target obviously has gone to Newcastle already. They'll need some defensive reinforcements again. And I wonder whether Calvin Bassey of Rangers is the, is the perfect fit for Villa, Dave. Obviously, mm. Gerard will know him well. He showed what he was capable of in the Europa League last year. And that is the level that Villa are trying to aim for this season. So another one that maybe Villa might try and examine. There's already been talk maybe that they were looking at an opening bid. But that was before Carlos came in. Well, another team that are going to have to do a lot of business if they hope to solidify their place in the league after returning to it is Bournemouth. I imagine you're in quite similar position to me here, Dave, where really the thing that we mainly think Bournemouth need to do is just add that Premier League quality to help them step up. They obviously came back quite quickly, actually, under Scott Parker. Mm -hmm. I anticipated they would. For me, I think the big thing for them will be reinforcing their defence again. They obviously had Nat Phillips on loan last season and he impressed, so... I think really aiming to keep him would be a massive move. And the other one that I looked at was uh, almost a bit of a homecoming. I wonder whether they might be able to get Nathan Ake back. What do you think, Dave? Where do you see Bournemouth strengthening this summer? It's a strange one with Ake because he went to City for such uh, such a grand amount of money and we've not really seen as much as we would have liked to have seen of him. And I'm sure he's not had as many games as he would have liked. So the only obviously stumbling block really is going to be the fee and whether City are, are willing to lose a bit of money because I can't see Bournemouth paying upwards of twenty million really. I and that see, probably I see it being that... a loan first. To be honest, I see it being mm. a loan for the first season at least. I yeah, don't, I don't think they'd buy him out right at this stage. No, yeah, I agree with what you're saying there. I think um, another player I was thinking of was Joe Ariba, um from Rangers. Yeah. Who's, you know, have a really good season overall. It looks a little bit tired towards the end of the season, but he's he's had a lot of presence in that midfield and he can kind of mix it up and hold the ball up really well. I just I just feel as though Bournemouth are gonna have to have a presence about them. There's a lot of unknown, I feel like, as well with that Bournemouth team and whether they'll be able to kind of perform at the Premier League level. We've seen a few players in there, the likes of Dominic Solanke, wouldn't thinking he might be able to do it in the Premier League. So he's got a second bite of the cherry. So second bite of the cherry. It's almost like you planned that one, mate. <laughs> well, if Bournemouth want to survive, they'll be looking to emulate last season's up and coming new uh, stars really in Brentford. I think Dave, we're both going to agree on their priority for this summer. Surely we both can't look past them just trying to secure Ericsson to a longer deal. As unlikely as it's starting to look, what do you think? Is there still hope that Ericsson will remain at Brentford next season? Well, there's talk that he wants to stay in London. If that is true, then they've got an op they've got obviously got a chance. Um, but the the rumours are there that Tottenham are interested again, and I'm sure he'd be you know eager to work with with Conte there, and because they're they're obviously on the up now. So in theory. In theory, the Spurs link makes sense because he's been there before, he's comfortable there, he would be in London, and he's probably at a stage in his life where he would like to be somewhere comfortable. I'm not sure it, that one makes sense on a footballing basis, though. Is there anyone else that you highlighted for Brentford? Because the one I looked at, and I'm going to annoy Forest fans now instead, was Brennan Johnson. I think mm -hmm. if, he was, yeah. if he was smart, I think he, he might be looking at Brentford as someone who looks more likely to establish themselves in the Premier League and a real talent that they could do within midfield. I just feel because Forrest have been promoted, I think it's a no-goer. I think he'll, he'll stay at Forrest. I don't think he's going anywhere. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of history with, with his you know, family name at Forrest. Obviously, his dad yeah. playing for Forrest. I don't think he's going to go anywhere. Mm. But yeah, no doubt he'd be that would be a brilliant move for him, really. Well, we'll move on then. We'll look at Brighton. It feels like the same old story with Brighton, doesn't it? That they're just going to need goals. They're mm. probably going to need another striker. I looked at someone that I haven't seen linked, but I'm surprised it isn't being linked with a move away more. I think Kelechi Iniacho might be a really good move for Brighton. I think he, he scored goals in the Premier League now. He has had a decent time at Leicester, but struggles to start games at the moment. And with Patson Daka there, who's younger, Jamie Vardy still knocking about, Iosi Perez... 
Luckman can play it down the centre as well. I think he'd be Brighton's main man. I wonder whether that might have legs at some point. Yeah, I agree. To be honest, I, I hadn't thought of him. But yeah, you make a good point there in saying there's plenty of competition. Obviously, remember, we forget Jamie Vardy's still there as well. Obviously, came back to full fitness at the end of the season and scored quite a few goals. So for that Brighton team, let's not forget how some of the football they played last season was brilliant to watch. Yeah. I mean, I went for Alexander Mitrovic. I know it's going to be a big, you know, a big ask to pull him out of Fulham, especially considering that obviously back in into the Premier League. But I just felt as though the last time he was in the Premier League, Fulham were absolutely dire. Like he, he, you know, anyone would have done well to score goals in that team. So yeah. I just, with the kind of football that Brighton do play, they really, you know, even up against the big guns, they dominate possession. They'll go toe to toe with you and equally have you know, same amount of possession as some of the big teams. So I just feel as though he'd probably suit those that team better. Bring up Brighton, cr- create plenty of chances as well. And what was it, forty odd goals last year? Ridiculous. It would take big money, I think, to get Fulham to to give him up. Really, the other option I thought about, and you might have him linked with another club because it's it's inevitable that he'll probably move on. Was Emmanuel Dennis? I think he's the right yeah. profile for Brighton. Had a decent enough season at Watford last season when they're a bit of a basket case. He's definitely not going to want to hang around and play in the championship. He's beyond that level. I thought he might be a good finisher for Brighton to look to bring in. Yeah, he showed he, scored, he, showed he could score goals, didn't he? He can yeah. you know, finish and that's just really what Brighton needs. It feels like a bit bizarre that they've kind of ignored that. Seems to be sort of dragging on. Surely as a, as a Brighton fan, you must be kind of, I don't, I don't know how they must feel. They must be so frustrated that they've not got a striker in that can, you know, score them 15 goals a season even. Yeah, and go a long way for them. There is an unknown quantity all of a sudden in the elite clubs in the league. We don't really know what to expect of Chelsea this season under new ownership, of course, without Abramovich for the first time in a long time, let's say. We don't know what their investment strategy is necessarily going to be, but it's clear that they do need investment. The big talk this week is obviously that Raheem Sterling might be looking at a move over there. Lukaku is also looking like he's on his way back to Inter, which would probably open up a spot as a number nine at Chelsea. But for me, there's only one area you can look at with Chelsea, and I'll pick two targets in the same position. They've got to address centre-back, surely. Rudiger's signed for Real Madrid officially today after completing his medical. Christensen's gone. Thiago Silva is uh, getting older, let's say. And Aspilicueta might still have some legs for next season, but I can't see him being their first-choice centre-back. It's probably the second most boring transfer saga. <laughs> I'm sure it is for Chelsea fans, hearing about Kunde. Other than Frankie de Jong this summer, that's just the second most boring saga for me. And I'm fed up of hearing about his name, to be honest. But I think, yeah, it'd be a brilliant signing for them. Yeah. The only other, the other name I mentioned wasn't in the defensive area. It was a striker and a striker that can score goals. And that's Jean-Luc Scamacca. Um, and it's, I just feel as though, I, so I could see what Chelsea were thinking in bringing Lukaku into that team. But I just feel as though Lukaku is a player, he does have his limitations, he does have uh, areas of his game where he kind of n- nullifies the, their own, like his team's link-up play. He's not the strongest in those areas. I do feel as though Chelsea probably just need to take a bit more of a low-risk move. I don't think, I think Skamaka, they could probably get him for a, a relatively decent price. Um, ready for for it to lead the line for a club like Chelsea well the the thing is though even in the previous season Chelsea didn't really have you know an out and out striker but I don't think it will hurt to have somebody okay let's let's say he's not going to start week in week out but it'd be nice to have an option there that's able to offer them something different Um, and it's kind I think that's what they were looking for in Lukaku they needed to kind of look to play a different way if they needed to I feel like it'd be a good option for them. I think he's been linked with Arsenal as well. The other one for me that I looked at was another centre-back. And obviously United have been linked very heavily with Timber from Ajax. Now that move looks almost dead in the water. Apparently Louis van Gaal said a a word in his ear at the Netherlands training saying, (laughs) stay well away. I actually think that with the, the kind of squad that Chelsea have got right now, and they've obviously, they've got quite aging defenders, a younger centre-back, would be a really good addition for them. And and he proved his worth at Ajax last season. The irony is, really, 
the perfect player for Chelsea right now, or the two perfect players for Chelsea right now, seem to be Fakayo Tomori and Tammy Abraham. They probably would both sit really, really well in this Chelsea lineup right now, but we are where we are, I suppose. <laughs> so with Chelsea on the on the brain, we move on to Crystal Palace. And the first one that I've linked with Crystal Palace is a bit of a lazy one, but it's got to be the return of Colin Gallagher, surely. They, they're going to need Gallagher back next season, right, Dave? He was probably the only player that I thought can come away from that hungry game who looked like anywhere good enough, really. Um, I think we're going to avoid for me, he was a, that's not saying a lot, but he was definitely standing in that midfield for me. But when I saw him play, I thought, I thought he looked really well. Um, and I thought it was unfortunate for him to come off. But yeah, like, I, I agree. It's, it's the obvious choice. Um, the other one I went for, it doesn't look like Forrest, they're going to get him back on loan, but I was thinking James Garner is a similar right, okay. sort of player. Or I did go for Loftus Cheek as well, because I don't, but I don't know how much yeah. football you're going to get at Chelsea. The other area I looked at with Palace was Guaita has days where he looks like a fantastic keeper, and then games mm. where I think he, he's nowhere near the right level. Jack mm. Butland has not really worked out for him. I wondered whether Alfonso Ariola might be a good move for them. Obviously, yeah. not getting as much game time as he would have liked to at West Ham last season was fantastic for Fulham in their last out in the Premier League, despite them getting relegated. And I thought, actually, he might plug that gap for Palace quite well. OK, well, let's move on then to a team that are clearly going to need strengthening this summer after a, let's, let's call it what is, a diabolical season last year. Frank Lampard has his first full summer in charge of Everton. Who's he going to bring in, Dave? What does he need, first of all? I don't even know where to start with Everton, to be honest. <laughs> Um, do you know what the hardest thing with Everton is what's what's their level in this window because if I'm if I'm a player thinking about moving over Everton are a very big club big fan base Frank Lampard you'd argue is just as big a name as, as Steven Gerrard and we've seen who he's been able to pull over but they don't seem to be in as commanding a position they barely were able to spend a penny last year so I think they're going to do everything on the cheap again unless they sell Richarlison mm -hmm. or Calvert-Lewin I guess there's one player that I have thought of um, bringing in a centre back that I think they've been linked with. Is it Tarkovsky? That was the first one I went for as well. It makes a lot of sense. Premier League experience, very good presence in the box, decent enough with the ball at his feet as well. I think mm. I think a logical centre back option for Everton. And um, the only other one I was thinking of as well that probably offer them a bit more depth kind of on the wings as a man that's already played for them and that's Adam Ola Luckman. If Leicester aren't looking at keeping him there, I think they should look at exercising and getting him back in because even Everton, I thought he played I thought he played quite well while I was there and for some reason they decided not to yeah. not to keep him there. So um yeah, that obviously there's plenty of positions that need strength in Everton and for me they, they they didn't replace Luca Dean adequately enough. They brought Mikalenko in. I, I don't think he's good enough of a left back to play in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. If they're going to look for some experience and try and do something on the cheap, I looked at Tagliafico from Ajax. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether that might be the mm -hmm. right sort of profile for Everton because he's kind he's of. Good. I think he's too good for them though. Well, he was um, being in Barcelona in January and then they mm -hmm. kind of came out and said they didn't want him. But he clearly wants to move away from Ajax and, and the Premier League might be enough to entice him over because he's not really being touted out anywhere else right now. I wonder whether that might be a decent enough show. Yeah. I saw, well, I saw he was linked with Liverpool, I think, as well. Like, I saw, he's back up to Robinson. I don't, yeah, I don't, oh, no disrespect to Everton, but I think he'll be looking for something a bit more safe. Oh, fair enough. Well, I can't agree on them all, I guess. What about <laughs> Fulham then, Dave? Fulham, obviously, newly promoted as well. Looking for a better time of it than they had last season. Probably not looking at spending too much and, and going over the top like they did last time as well. I think Marco Silva will probably be a bit smarter about it. Any ideas where you think they might want to strengthen? I don't, this might be a debatable one, but it's, it's a talented young player who's playing for RZ Altmar, um, but Owen Windle, who's really good going forward. I just feel as though last time Fulham were in the Premier League, they kind of did try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some teams and yeah. fair play to them. They played some decent football, but they were ultimately undone at the back on more than one occasion. 
I know that's probably not the, the, the areas they probably should be focusing. I, th- I do feel as though they need, probably need a couple of centre-backs in there who are, who are more of the quality of the Premier League. But I just felt as though on that left side, I think it's Joe Bryan who plays there at the moment. I, I just feel like they need probably need an upgrade there. He got 10 assists in, in Eredivisie last season as well, which I think is actually really good. I'd be scared giving him another attacking fullback though, whether that, that's going to be something that, that will benefit them or not. Yeah, I, I, I'll, it'll be interesting to see how they approach this season because they got found out obviously the last time they were in, and I just think they need to a little bit be a bit more strategic with their approach and how they're going to approach games because it just reminds me a little bit of Norwich in how they kind of turned up and kind of expected to do better, but again got found out and. It, it just seems to be like they're going to be a bit of a yo-yo club. I hope that's not the case. But I think uh, I've seen a couple of links with Fulham that I, I saw and thought that makes total sense. One of them being Leno. Obviously, I can't imagine he's going to be happy playing second fiddle to Ramsdale and, and Arsenal will want to get funds from somewhere. So he's an asset that they probably could move on. Premier League experience. I actually think Leno is a very good, good keeper. Again, as with a lot of these keepers that move over to England, they have got a few mistakes in them, but generally speaking, a good shot stopper. I I think that would make sense for Fulham, unless they went back in for Areola as well, I suppose. And the other one that I thought about was Minamino. He's going to be available this summer, it seems quite clear. He's going to want a game time. We'll have a point to prove, it feels like, in the Premier League. He had that loan spell at Southampton, obviously, that, that was okay. I think, I think that'd be a good bet for Fulham to get a bit of attacking talent in there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one, to be fair. I think, but in moments, Minamino has shown that he can, you know, yeah. he can score goals. He scored a couple of important goals for Liverpool towards the end of the season, to be honest. Definitely. And I feel as though he can definitely make a make an impact. And yeah, like you mentioned there, I'm, I'm sure he won't kind of, he won't want to stick around, I don't think. I think he's too far back down the pecking order now, isn't he? Definitely. Well, let's have a look then at another team that will be fighting relegation if they don't strengthen as they were last season. We'll look at Leeds. Now, Leeds, their priority really will be keeping players fit. Looks like Rafina might be on the move. There's a lot of big clubs linked with him. And just a shout out to the fact that his agent is Deco. Yeah, that one, you know, Deco. Amazing. Uh, so with Leeds, for me, I think they showed last season that they didn't quite have enough Premier League experience They didn't have enough depth in some areas. So I've gone for two slightly odd shouts, but bear with me. Another player that looks like he might be on his way out of Liverpool to generate some funds is Oxlade Chamberlain. I can see him fitting in really well in this Leeds side. I know they're quite high intensity at times and he's not got the best injury record, but if they're looking for depth in a midfield position and someone who can create something and also bring that leadership into a team, I think Oxlade Chamberlain might be a good shout. But when it comes to leadership and someone with Premier League experience, there's no doubt in that Leeds need to sort out their defence as well. And one player that's available on a free is Ben Mee. I I wonder whether he might make a a decent move. Not too far for him to move. And Mm. and actually someone that might reinforce that Leeds defence, Dave. What do you think? I did take Rafinha's departure into account. And I went for somebody who might be a bit of a risk because they're not really Premier League proven. But... Um, I went for Ryan Kent from Rangers. Okay, yeah. Um, I think they can probably potentially get him at a decent price as well and still have change left over to, you know, strengthen other areas like you mentioned. I think he's uh, got plenty of experience. He's got European experience as well. Yeah. Um, will often think about this Rangers team, aren't you? It's you fine. know, they've, they've, proved it in, uh, they've proved it in Europe and um, I just feel as though he has got that energy as well that will, that is needed for um, that Leeds team. Not quite as energetic since we also went, but um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel as though he, he'd be a good addition for them. It's a good shout. Looks like Leicester are going to have some business to do as well, Dave. How do you feel about your local boys? What, what is it that they need to address? I mean, I think, again, we're probably going to agree on the first thing they need to fix. It depends. Well, <laughs> If, especially from set players, yeah, they've got to sort that defence out. I mean, having, uh, having as many injuries as they've had over the last two seasons really has, has set them back quite a way. But yeah, they've got to address the defence, haven't they, Dave? Who, who have you gone for? Um, Nathan Collins. Okay. Then, 
who Bernie only signed, I think, the season before yeah. from Stoke. But he has, he's a really talented defender. He's great at the set pieces. Yeah, quite a tall guy. He's he's, he's going to be able to. I feel that I feel as though he'll definitely assist them in you know addressing that issue that they've got. I went for a slightly flashier option at centre back. I went for a French connection with Fafana, and I'm thinking of Maxence Lacroix over at Wolfsburg. Oh he's yeah, beautiful centre back who will take anything in the air that he needs to, which will sort out their problems from set pieces. Pacey, so I think he'd adjust to the Premier League very, very well. He's been linked with a move already. He's only 22. So there's a lot of potential there as well. Apparently Villa were looking at him before they brought Carlos in. I think he'd suit Leicester really well, to be honest. Yeah, and that's something that Leicester have got, obviously got into the habit of doing, especially in these last few years. They seem to be buying young talent and yeah. looking potentially as a business model as well. You, you're looking to kind of profit from players who might potentially get, I don't want to say too good for the club, um, because I think that's a little bit disrespectful. But when they do kind of move on, we've seen the likes of Maguire and Mares move over the years. The other one I looked at was was potentially a midfield reinforcement if Tielemans was to go. And it's a player that I know very, very well from one season at Villa, where he was terrible, and then a few very good years at Roma. Jordan Veritu could be on the move this summer. Obviously, Roma have brought in Matic. They also brought in uh, Oliveira in January so there is space in that midfield or a lack of space in that midfield we should say so a potentially a player that might have proved his worth over the last couple of years and maybe another bite at the Premier League might suit him there's going to be players in there I think Madison will will be another one if he starts the season how he ends ended last season he'll be another one I think for for the you know being touted for the England squad I don't think Southgate likes him I just I can't see him getting in I'll be honest. We wanted to avoid talking about England. That's why we're doing this show. We didn't want to talk about Hungary or England. <laughs> no. <laughs> so another th- thing that we don't particularly like talking about is Liverpool. It looks mm. like they've already done their business and some fantastic business at that as well. Obviously, they brought in Ramsey this weekend to provide some competition for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Mm. They brought in Fabio Valio from, from Fulham, who had a, a great breakthrough last season. And the big one, of course, was Darwin Nunes. So it's hard to identify really where Liverpool will go from here whether they mm. will do much more business. So I've highlighted two players, but I've kind of cheated because I think actually they're probably more likely targets for next summer. If I was Klopp, I would be relying on next year bringing in Bellingham. I think that that's the one that everyone mm. is thinking will make sense for Liverpool. Refresh that midfield. Henderson obviously is getting older and older. Naby Keita isn't necessarily the finished article, but we don't think he might not make it at that level so I think Bellingham makes perfect sense and then my other one I don't want to see it happen and I think actually they've got enough players in those positions now that it wouldn't but a player that would suit Liverpool so well Jared Bowen just seems like he's made for that kind of Liverpool front line doesn't he so Mm -hmm. again I can't really see either of them happening this summer but if you ask me what Liverpool needed, they're probably the two I'd look at. What about you, Dave? I completely agree with um, the Bellingham one as one I did have in, in my mind. Um, I agree with what you're saying about Jared Bowen as well. I just feel as though his playing style is 100 miles an hour. I yeah. just feel as though he's the sort of player that would seamlessly fit into that Liverpool side. Um, you know, he might have to rotate with some of the players that they've got up, um, up top. I just think something that Liverpool have got right, right, especially over the last few years, they seem to be targeting the right players. And if they can't get those players in, they seem to be not panicking. Yeah. They're waiting. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the right way to go about things. We'll move on to your 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 best friends in Manchester, the ones <laughs> that are doing some business so far, Manchester City. Obviously, they've been very busy, as you mentioned, with with Erlen Haaland coming in, but still a couple of names being linked. And I've cheated, to be honest. I've gone with the two most obvious ones because they're the ones being talked about but seem to make sense. Calvin Phillips. I think City will be looking for a replacement for Fernandinho, someone that can rotate with Rodri when they need to. And I think Phillips is that level. I don't think he's starting for City every week, but I think his game could come on a long way under Guardiola and he could provide some cover, definitely. And Cucurella from Brighton. It looks like Zinchenko might be moving on. 
and they're going to want some competition at left back for Cancelo or maybe even a, a left back to play and Cancelo to move back to the right. Who knows? That's a link that's been pretty vocal over the last few weeks, but another one that just seems to make perfect sense to me, to be honest. With Cucurella as well, I've been actually been really impressed with him at Brighton. Every time I've seen him play, you know, he looks like the sort of player that could adapt to that City team. Um, going forward, he's really strong going forward and offers a lot in those attacking areas. So, um, I don't I, like like you say, it depends a lot on outgoings. There's a lot of talk of Bernardo Silva on the way out. Yeah, um, if he does go, because but apparently Barcelona are interested in him. That would be the best thing Man United have ever done: buying Frankie De Jong so that Bernardo Silva goes to Barcelona. That's <laughs> incredible. That's too good for it to actually happen to United. It's an interesting one, really, because I'm struggling to think of names that could come in and replace Bernardo Silva. Uh, yeah. Ones that are available as well, and ones that are at an age to kind of, you know, develop. And because, you know, City aren't really a team that are buying finished articles the year before Bernardo Silva wanted to leave, didn't he? Yeah. At that moment, and. Pep kind of talked him round, and it's kind of looking that way, like that potentially he is going to leave. There'll be obviously a lot of talk with Riyad Mahrez as well. He's been at City for a number of years, probably doesn't play as many games as he would like, but it's definitely makes for interesting times. Um, there's not going to be a number, a great deal of incomings at, at City. Speaking of not a great deal of incomings, <laughs> I wonder where we'll go next, Dave. Right, I'm going to say mine really quickly because I imagine I'm not going to get any time to talk about United because you all want to have a good old moan and I don't blame you. For me, I, neither of these are going to happen. But what United need right now, they definitely need a player to play on the right-hand side because it looks like Sancho is going to be your left winger from now on because Rashford hasn't really cut it out. And why not go back to Ajax and look at Anthony? I think he looks fantastic. Very, very skillful player. Good, dynamic, pacey exactly what United kind of would like on that right-hand side. Uh, and then the ideal candidate for the for the other role, I'm not looking at Frankie de Jong. I'm going to be totally honest. If that happens, I'll be amazed. I, look, maybe it will. I just, I, I cannot see United pulling that one off. A long-term target of very good reputation. Barcelona don't really want to lose him unless they have to. He doesn't really want to leave. Xavi doesn't want him to leave. It all seems set up for United mm. to end up Fellaini on deadline day all over again <laughs> but if it were me i'd be throwing as much money as i've got at declan rice for man united honestly mm. that, that's the answer surely dave obviously the the real kind of stumbling block again is is the price and there's been rumors you know that have been going on for the last couple of years really that chelsea and man united have been interested in in him and it's just, it's unrealistic, in my opinion, just because of the amount of money that West Ham going to demand for him. It might be a case of him signing a new deal and having a clause inserted similar to the Grealish one, where, if gonna say. Needs, you know... Are West Ham asking for more than 100 million right now? Apparently, they're saying 150 million or something ridiculous, aren't they? Absolutely mental. Mm -hmm. So go on then, who, who are you picks? If I had to push you, who are United actually going to bring in? I, think, I have said Anthony, but I've also said another one who um, I don't think would happen. It sounds like he's going to go abroad, but he's also been linked with Barcelona, but that's been called, that's called a little a, a lot recently. He's been linked with Arsenal, he's Rafinha. I feel like they're, they're quite similar players, Rafinha and Anthony. I think I think I'd go for Anthony over Rafinha. He, I think he is a little, he's a little bit younger and I just yeah. feel as the potential... I think he's probably is, he's got a little bit more of a high ceiling for me. For me, I, I feel like they, either of those two would be a great signing for United. Fra yeah, Frankie De Jong, again, it's, I don't know if United is just trying to kind of haggle the price down. I'm surprised that you've gone with two right wingers, though, because it seems like United have needed a holding midfielder for the last oh, eight years. They do need somebody to sit in, but again, as well, it depends how Ten Hag is going to set up and play. True. With that Ajax team, the uh, a name they've been linked with today is Lissandro Martinez, who can play in defensive midfield position. Yeah, um, he didn't really play. I don't think last season from Ajax much. I know he played at centre back. 
Um, but he is capable of playing there, and uh, he's awesome. looking at apparently as well. Yeah, he's obviously a player that you know Ten Hag trusts. Apparently, you know the the thing with Timber, Louis Van Hall has said he needs to get minutes to play at the World Cup. If he doesn't get minutes, he's not going to put him in his squad, which I find a bit ridiculous considering. Stephen Burvine never plays for Tottenham and he still makes Louis van Gaal's squad um, game after game. Um, so, yeah, again, there's. I think we've been linked with like 84 names since the transfer window opened. I think that, I'm that, one of them. Flipping heck. <laughs> I'm ankling <ankling> still. <laughs> That's just crazy to me. Look, I, I just feel as though there's a lot of unknown about our transfer window who what what are we actually doing what names are we actually interested in it seems like the press are kind of banging about names and you know hitting and hoping really so hey, you keep setting me up so well that's just the perfect link should we should we leave united alone for a bit and talk about newcastle because <laughs> another one that basically newcastle have got money let's link them with everyone who wants some money <laughs> And I've kind of fallen for that trap a little bit. I think as good as Callum Wilson is, he's so injury prone. They're going to need another striker. Chris Woods is, is not going to be Newcastle's leading man. So I looked at Luka Jovic. He's going to need a move away from Real Madrid, definitely. And potentially, you could look at going back to Frankfurt, of course. They've obviously just come off the back of some success. I, I think it would be nice for him to have a bit of a change, go to a physical league like the Premier League and somewhere he matches Real Madrid wages, to be honest. That, to me, w was the first one. And then someone else would be looking for a lot of money and apparently is available this summer. But is the sort of profile that might elevate Newcastle slightly is uh, Adrian Rabio. Looks like he might be on his way out of Juventus. They've got a lot of midfield options. High wages but also high profile. And that seems to be what Newcastle could aim for this summer. What do you think, Dave? I think the Rabio one's probably a bit of a stretch. Obviously, they'd have no problem paying his wages, but he's kind of come with a bit of baggage, I think, in some teams that he's obviously played for. And I just feel as though he'll feel like he's probably too good for Newcastle, which, you know, in fairness, he is. Mm. Is he going to get a better offer than Newcastle this summer? Again, I... yeah, that's another question. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because of sort of the potential of their war chest, so to speak, I think it almost kind of makes, as a manager, makes you kind of think twice, oh, can I actually do better than this player? Because I've actually yeah. got more money yeah. than, do you know what I mean, for a player that maybe I would have had in mind previously. It'd be interesting to see how Eddie, Eddie Howe manages that. They obviously did very good business in January. I don't think anyone would discredit that. They've signed Matt Target permanently, which I thought was mm. interesting. So they obviously have some confidence in him going forward. Which mm. don't blame him, good player. Uh, and they've already got Bruno Gimaresh on the books. So they've got some quality in there already. They're just going to need to add more if they want to hit the heights that they've been talking about. But uh, their opponents on the opening day of the season, I believe, are Nottingham Forest. So uh, I've created a link for myself there, mate. Uh, again... I think we're both going to agree on their most obvious target, that their priority has got to be holding on to Jed Spence, which looks difficult because there's some big clubs looking at him. Apparently Tottenham is still lining him up. We'll I, went, I went for him, you mentioned earlier, um, for another team. I went for Oxlade chamber I just feel, oh, really? uh, yeah, I just feel, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. He's, he's obviously got a lot of Premier League experience. I feel like he'd offer a lot to um, a new, kind of a newcomer uh, coming up and definitely be able to sort of help out, especially some of the younger players. Todd Forrest have got quite a few long, young lads in there. Well, the other one I looked at, and Forrest fans might not be that keen on this, but I have got a logic behind it. Obviously, they had Keenan Davis on loan last season, and he did get on quite well there. I don't think he'll go back, I'll be totally honest. Mm. But a big physical forward could really fill the gap. And Veghorst over at Burnley is already making kissy faces at the Premier League, saying that he doesn't want to play in the Championship next year. So, Although he only got the two goals for Burnley, he has been a goal scorer at a top level before. And I wonder whether Forrest might take a punt on him. You know, it's a shame really we didn't really get to see him from the beginning of the season, um, kind of see a little bit more of what he's about. And like you mentioned there, he, he, he did do really well in, in, in Germany. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the likes of him be linked with him. 
Well, if you're still with us, thank you. Four to go. We're nearly there. And maybe it's your club that we haven't got to yet. One that I think we both struggled with a little bit because I don't know if, if anyone knows what their level is currently in the league or in their acquisition is Southampton. Very odd club to judge and a very odd season for them. They they look like they could just as easily get eighth and get 18th in a season. So they'll look to be a bit more stable this summer, I imagine. Starting with a bit of stability in keeping hold of Brogia from Chelsea. I think we're probably both going to agree on that one. Yeah. And the other one that I looked at was maybe taking a punt on Dwight McNeil. Obviously, last season, his numbers were pretty poor. But he has shown before that he was a star player for Burnley in the Premier League and has capability and was quite highly rated. I don't know whether a season in the Championship might do him some good, but it was someone that I thought might fit quite nicely into that Southampton. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned there, he wasn't in the best form last season, but the season before, you know, kind of really sort of burst onto the stage and showed that you know, he can he can do it, cut it at that level. So I'd be surprised to see him stay at Burnley. Um, however, obviously the lure of company might change things, but um, I'm for Mad I went for non um, Nani Madaweki from um, PSV, who I feel as though he might be a difficult name to attract, but I just feel as though Southampton would be a good start starting club, especially in the Premier League, to kind of prove that you know you can you can do it at that level. And um, Southampton play good football as well, so he looks um, fantastic, a really yeah. exciting talent. Definitely, I've seen him for England under twenty ones, and he just looks amazing. Mm. Another one that we haven't mentioned. In terms of Southampton, and I mentioned his name earlier on, but maybe Gareth Bale could go back there. Could do, yeah. Um, I think he's been linked with Cardiff as well, which would be a crazy one if he went yeah. to Cardiff. But I can't, you know, I can't see that one. But I feel as they probably they need something, somebody with a bit more experience. Obviously, they lost Danny, so um, yeah. I think Bale could be a, could be a good one. Well, the last time Bale was in the Premier League, he was at Tottenham. There you go. We're doing it again. These links, Dave. I'm on fire today. Who needs Mike, eh? So Spurs, again, been quite busy so far. Bought in Eves of Basuma on a 25 million deal. Fantastic transfer, if you ask me. Ivan Perisic has come in, which is as Antonio Conte as it gets, of course. But they'll definitely need some more business. I think I think uh, Conte will be very keen for some, some extra additions. Now, Arsenal fans, look away. The name that I think makes the most sense for Spurs... Gabriel Jesus, if he can play in the middle or play on the wing, but we don't think he's necessarily a good enough to be 38 game a season Premier League 30 goal striker. Well, Spurs have been looking for some quality backup to Harry Kane for a long time, but having a versatile forward that can play across the front three means that he would get more game time there than at City. You'd imagine. I think that one. I think that really suits Spurs right now, don't you? It's something we did mention. I think last year is that one thing. Spurs didn't really have was a great deal of strength and depth and if you know Kane does kind of miss a few games here or there then they will definitely will need somebody to step into his place and we saw the likes of Son doing more often than not last season but I just feel it's a little bit unfair to continuously rely on him to kind of come up with the goods. There's talk that Emerson Royale might be on his way to Atletico Madrid. I'm not sure he's convinced by Regulon or Sessegnon at full back. So one person I looked at was Atalanta's Joachim Mele. I think he's, he's a flying wing back who can play on the right or the left. And that's going to be really important to Conte looking for some depth in the squad, especially as they get back into the Champions League. So I, I think he probably suits Conte's system quite well. We've got two left. One of them is, is like a, a reunion show for you. Uh, we're going to look at West Ham. Obviously, they've got Davy Moyes there. And I'm looking at a bit of a United connection here. I think we'll both agree on one name. The return of Jesse Lingard makes perfect sense for West Ham to add some depth. The other one I've looked at is another United player, actually, because I think West Ham will need some, some strength up front. Antonio played a lot of games last season. Mm. And obviously, he's a number nine these days, but you're going to need someone that can support in attacking positions. I think maybe a small drop down for Anthony Martial might make sense. Maybe he could hang around in England, move to London and maybe actually be a starter at a club in the Premier League for the first time in a while. What do you think, Dave? Could you see Martial leaving United this summer? Yeah, the big, the biggest obstacle is going to be the wages. Apparently he's on over 200 grand a week. So it's whether he's willing to drop to drop those uh, demands. And um, yeah, 
obviously first and foremost looking for first team um first team action and it's something he desperately needs yeah like you mentioned i think west ham would be a good move for him um yeah i, I think they need they'll, they'll make a statement what, what kind of statement are you thinking west ham will make is there anyone you pulled out in particular i was thinking of although he's suffered his injuries over the last few years someone like paco alcacer um when he was at dortmund he obviously did really well suffered with injuries um at times but i just feel as though they need somebody who's um a bit more of a poacher in their instincts because you know antonio we, we know obviously he's a great leading line um, strike when it needs to be but um i just feel as though they need someone who's a bit more of a finisher yeah i think they're not the only club the other one that we've got left right at the end of the alphabet is wolves and i think they probably need some support for raul jimenez up front don't they we saw I'm not. I'm still not convinced by Fabian Silva. I think he. I think he's incredibly overhyped and overrated personally. And I know he's still young. It's taking his time to to bed in. And uh, I think there's a couple of strikers that that Wolves might look at. The obvious and lazy option is to look at Portuguese players. And I think Adrian Silva makes a lot of sense for Wolves. A more experienced striker, someone who does score goals, but looks like he would have the right pull to move over to Molyneux. Mm. And then the other two names that I looked at both kind of outlets from Juventus. Another striker that maybe will be looking for a bit of a point to prove in the Premier League is Moise Ken. Juventus have said that they're not looking necessarily to hold on to him next season. It hasn't worked out at Everton, but maybe Wolves could give him a chance. And finishing off with someone who is going to be desperate for first-team football and move away from Juventus, getting ready for the Euros. They've got to replace Jean Martino or Ruben Neves if they move on. I'm saying Aaron Ramsey to Wolves. What do you think of that? Yeah. I'd take Aaron I, Ramsey at a lot of Premier League clubs, to be honest. And that depends, obviously, on his fitness. You know, he's had a bit of a nightmare the last, last year or so. Uh, so, but I feel like, yeah, he, he would offer a lot to a team like Wolves. Another one that's been mentioned is Pauli from, um yeah. from Sporting, who's a really good upcoming uh, midfielder. Um, yeah. Obviously, again, the Portuguese connection. But from when I've seen him play um, for Sporting, he's looked really good. And if if uh, Neves is on his way out, you, you know, there's been a lot of rumours around that, then that would be an, an obvious addition. I mean, there's going to be plenty of names out there, but it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise you if they, if they had some sort of uh, another addition come over from Portugal <laughs> again. Someone we've never heard of, like uh, Vieira at Arsenal. No, just kidding. <laughs> well. <laughs> We did it, Dave. 20 yeah. clubs. We've gone through them all. How do you feel, mate? Are you excited for the new season yet? Or is that just bored you enough to think, do you know what? I'm ready for a summer now. It's too much thinking. It's a way off. I'm, you know, without United operating in the transfer window, I'm frankly bored of it. Yeah, uh, frankly bored of it. Yeah, I'm just glad. For, I'll be, I'm ready for it to be over um, before it's barely even started. So, um, yeah, obviously we, we can't wait for the football to begin again and, Let's hope it's worth the wait. Um, and we've got a World Cup to wait for as well. It's all exciting, really, Dave. And already we've seen some exciting moves in the transfer window. If if even five of the ones we've talked about happen, we'll be absolutely buzzing and feel like we're geniuses, even though we've probably just got a lot of rumours off the sun. But, Dave, I appreciate you being with me. Anyone listening or watching, thank you so much for, for being with us as well. Whether you're with us on YouTube or Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's lovely to be on so many platforms and to have you with us week in, week out. We thank you for the support. As a fairly new channel, it makes a lot of difference to us. So if you can follow us on our socials, you'll see them above Dave's head. And of course, you know where to find us everywhere else. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me, Dave. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining me, everyone else. We'll see you soon, I'm sure, to talk about some of these transfers. 